before we jump in, uh, Tom, tell everyone a little bit about yourself personally and sort of your journey to where we are today at Arkiva. Yeah, sure. So um, I joined Arkiva in April 2017 um, and I've loved working for them. Um, it was a great choice to, um, I was working up uh, in the north actually for the NHS. So my background has been primarily uh, retail and then uh, I went into the NHS and public sector for about 10 years um, and that involved working for a um, uh, joint venture between the Department of Health and a French IT company called Soposteria. So there was lots of business process outsourcing and uh, uh, obviously within the UK, the NHS is the biggest user of uh, Oracle as a platform. So uh, it was a great opportunity to get to work with lots of technology at scale. Um, and ultimately it's some of that experience that led on to uh, the recent HCM implementation at Arkiva. You're one of those HR leaders that loves technology. One of the few. Uh, I do. I do. I love a gadget. I love a bit of technology and what it can do for us. So uh, wh why Arkiva then? Because obviously there's a big change in terms of the industries. I mean, as an industry, Arkiva is at the heart of technology and what it does, obviously, with broadcast and transmission, um, Internet of Things, um, and it's, uh, you know, it's play out all the, all the different avenues that Arkiva is involved in. There's a technological, technological angle. Um, and also the scale of um, something like the NHS meant that you were um, a very small cog in a big machine. Mm -hmm. So the ability to affect change and, and my role involved uh, a massive amount of uh, travel across the UK. And whilst it had lots of benefits, actually, for me, getting to know a group of people, um, Archive has got uh, approximately 2,000 employees. So having a HR team that I could work closely with and develop relationships with and just see every day to day was, was really important for me in terms of um, what I was looking for in my next step so the, the two really brought that together for me. Amazing so what sparked this initiative yeah, what was the reason for this change? Sure so um, in terms of the wider transformation um, Archive is looking to replace lots of its um, technology just really to make sure that we're fit to serve customers and um, that our employees have got the tools to do everything they need to do day to day um, so you know that's a massive investment that the, that the company is is making to make sure that uh, we bring all that up to uh, up to top-notch uh, technology um, and uh, for us putting HR at the front of that queue, um, you know, was a was a massive achievement in uh, replacing our legacy PeopleSoft uh, with Oracle HCM. Because um, we sort of said, you know, let's start with our let's start with our people. Let's uh, let's make that uh, a really great experience for them. Yeah, there's so many different platforms out there. So why Oracle? Um, so obviously we went through a very rigorous uh, process in looking at um, all the different options are, that are out there. Obviously, uh, for us, we looked at a lot of the main competitors that are out there for for Oracle. Um, so we had a look at um, uh, Workday, amongst others, and and they had you know some really fantastic applications out there. So we looked at what what was the functionality um, and what was the the roadmap. So with Oracle HCM, I think what really stood out for us was whilst a lot of the other competitors have got you know good looking products actually what's beneath the the bonnet in terms of the capability of the product its ability to integrate um, its mobile functionality um, uh, and just how extensive um, the delivery is of a future enhancements so i think what, what blew us away was you know oracle had taken a product and matured it you know fairly rapidly and and with the, the quarterly releases you know i think to date they've delivered over 12,000 enhancements to the to the base product since they went live and actually just seeing that you know sometimes it's that thing that you see you know there's something out there there there's a need for something and actually oracle can get there pretty quickly you know they're already thinking ahead to um you know what space is is hr what space a business is looking to to move into or do they need to capitalize more on and and they've got the the ability to get there um so that really stood out for us so we spoke about some of the rationale for 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 change but what was the main or challenges you're trying to solve then as a HR team? So if I start really with uh, as a HR team, um, we we had a PeopleSoft platform that um, as a business we had uh, very heavily customized. So um, as with lots of companies, you know, we've various GPs and 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 uh, we needed to standardize terms and conditions, which we which we did as a as a business. Um, but having a platform that gave us reliable data um, and for our managers to do things like self-service. So so there was functionality there, but where we we 
customize that sort of to within an inch of its life. Some of it wasn't <laughs> wasn't working as well. Um, and, you know, it's a very expensive and, and um, you know, heavy maintenance thing to do when you've got all that customization and all that energy was really going in a place that, that wasn't helpful for us. So, um, you know, being able to perform basic transactions and have really good reporting data was was key for us. And we just needed to get rid of people soft as, um, uh, it, it, you know, it just wasn't being reliable for us yeah. and was causing a lot of pain and distraction throughout uh, the HR team. So that always meant we were sort of in this reactive position where, you know, um, the business would, would would ask us to do something. We'd always be in a place where we'd say, well, okay, uh, we'll have to see how we're going to get people soft to do that rather than the position we are now with HCM where we can say, um, okay, you know, hit, thanks for, for, for giving us a, the question. Okay, now we'll see what, what solution HCM can drive for us and, and actually, uh, you know, driving better outcomes. Um, so it's become an enabler rather than a, a limiter um, for us. And, and for the business, it's just that uh, ability to book your holiday, to record your sickness, to capture the fact you've had a one-to-one -one with your manager and capture the conversation easily and, and not in all these disparate locations. So, you know, not having things recorded on spreadsheets and, um, you know, other documents. Actually, you know, we've got one platform and it's for all your employment needs just put it there so how much uh, did user experience play a part because a lot of our workforce um, is not based um, necessarily in a corporate location you know we have lots of um, engineers and, and field technicians that are out and about um, the ability to operate on mobile was hugely important for us so um, where Oracle was going with its new responsive user interface and how that worked on mobile was uh, really critical because um, actually being able to um, you know interact and raise a service request to, to the HR help desk on the go um you know from from your mobile phone uh, really important just out of curiosity because a lot of people uh, want to go through sim similar transformations but sometimes perhaps struggle to get buy-in or support what level of support did you have from the business? Um, so we worked really closely with uh, the, the whole business. I think everyone was really frustrated with um, the legacy people soft that we had. So that kind of we were pushing a little bit against an open door in terms of there wasn't anyone that was really clinging on to people soft going, oh, it's great. And it's, you know, it's really helping us. So the so the momentum was already there for us, for, for people to go, OK, you know, we're, we're fed up with that and we, and we want to, to move forward. But uh, we put together a really comprehensive um, change network, which included representation from leadership and employees across uh, our business um, because we looked at HCM as it's not just an HR application it is a business tool um, that's driving business outcomes um, so you know making sure that everyone had a say in this was was really key um, we also involved our, our representative board and our, our union in areas that they were concerned about previously to just make sure that we had everyone had an opportunity to to be involved in the design um, of the product because it is highly configurable um, and to understand probably the change that we were going on because we were sort saying you know there's nothing that we're particularly wed to in in the way that we used to operate yeah. um and therefore we were going to flip some things on its head and do it completely differently and um adopt some real best practice so yeah early visibility of that from everyone so that they could ask the questions and and share their concerns and um really understand it was was really important and uh, they were involved in all the uh, sort of the conference room pilots and the uh, testing scenarios so that that confidence could be built that actually we were you know we we were making a product that was fit for purpose for our for our company. Did you and go live it. all at once? Yeah, we did go live with everything apart from payroll cloud. Um, so we went live with all the modules. So um, ten of them from talent absence, recruitment cloud, everything on the twenty second of July, and then we went live with our payroll in October, um, and had a very successful implementation with that as well. So the, I mean, there was a choice to whether or not we kind of went um, bit by bit, as, as, as some people do with their implementation, but um, ultimately ultimately when we looked at it that tends to mean that you don't look at your processes end to end as a whole. So, um, you know, some experience uh, in the past when I've done this is that if you, um, you know, you could choose to do um, compensation and core HR right at the start, and then you come back and do your talent processes and recruitment a bit later when there's there's maybe some more stability. But it tends to mean you want to make some changes to, to what you'd already implemented up front, whereas this way we looked at everything as part of the whole um, sort of employee experience and journey. And that doesn't mean we've got everything Everything perfectly right I mean one thing with cloud is things are always changing so something that um, you don't like or you do like may change you know in the next in the next quarter 
um, through from Oracle. But um, on the whole, we got the majority of it right, but it's it's given us some some areas to focus in on a little bit more as we move forward. Yeah. What advice would you give to everyone listening that are ever thinking about going through a similar journey or currently <laughs> in the journey? It's look after your project team, your HR team, uh, you know, that are delivering this because actually what we found was probably after um, sort of the second sort of pilot phase there's almost a little bit of fatigue is kind of sets in um, where you're just exhausted because you know whatever however you resource these projects they're just so intense and I think it's actually um, you don't realize going into um, a project like this is you are questioning all the time why do we do you know why do we deliver recruitment this way why why are our absence processes set up in this way and 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 how do we want that done in the future and that constant kind of critical thinking around processes is absolutely exhausting um, so having a great team um, you know we were really fortunate to dedicate people from our from our HR team and back backfill them in their in their substantive roles which was the, the right thing to do um but but kind of keeping them engaged and 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 you know um you, you kind of go look we're you know we're doing this for the for, for the right reasons guys but yeah just um finding ways to kind of t- so we were we took some time out you know did a couple of away days and things because you do kind of almost need to step back from it um you know just take a take a breather um, yeah. So I think, yeah, that, that was a really key thing was looking after the team that are doing it and data. We take advice from lots of other customers that had implemented and pretty much the, the key feedback that we'd had from lots of HR teams was, oh, we took far more data than we needed to. And, you know, we haven't used it and it's caused us lots of problems. We took a, uh, you know, took that feedback, reflected, took a slightly more uh, data light uh, approach in terms of not taking loads of data that, that wasn't necessarily useful for us to take that we'd have had to spend a lot of time tidying up on. So obviously we took everything that we needed to be compliant and to, to work successfully as a, as a business. But uh, so we didn't take all of you know, we could have taken the last 10 years worth of yeah. uh, performance documents, but we chose not to, um, you know, managers still have access to those if they need them. But we're taking a slightly more data light approach. What it actually means is something like Oracle HCM has got all this great analytics and the machine learning and everything that's in it. But if you don't take over data, you actually just end up with some graphs that are a little bit blank until you start <laughs> populating it. So, uh, you know, over the course sort of 18 months, well, that new baseline of data will will develop and will mature and we'll have some really exciting looking graphs. But yeah, not taking over history of recruitment does mean that, you know, the pipeline looked fantastic on day one because there was kind of nothing in it, which doesn't necessarily ring true with reality. Good advice there. And I, I love your first point about looking after the team. What was the um, a, a reaction from you, both your team and then also the business? What's the re- been the reaction been so far? So the business has been, um, you know, hugely positive about the reception of HCM. You know, we couldn't have done it without their support. And we had lots of, I think, because of that engagement and us kind of not doing it behind closed doors, we we actually did the implementation in, an, you know, we've got very open plan offices. So, um, you know, so the whole HR team, even those um, involved in the project or people visiting our area of the HR team, um, you know, from across the business could, could look at some of the information that was available or ask questions to the project team. That meant that kind of, um, you know, there was no surprises as such. Um, so we had generated quite a lot of um, hype within the business, um, you know, because we were very excited about, you know, this new HR platform coming with HCM and then the, and, you know, the, um, you know, a key deliverable within our transformation journey. Um, and, and I think whilst that hype was right, actually, we got some feedback from employees that were like, oh, it's really easy to use. We didn't need too much training. And whilst there have been a couple of people that have sort of said, oh, well, you know, we miss people soft, but that was because it was familiar um, and they will become familiar with, with, with HCM. And we were really lucky that we also had massive engagement from our finance team during the implementation because they consume so much of the the data from a payroll from a costing perspective um, and they were obviously they're they're going on their own finance transformation journey so they wanted to make sure that they were receiving you know really good information from us so they were great advocates um, in supporting uh, uh, the change as well you yeah. we said earlier about talking about hcm isn't just a tool for hr it's also for the entire business uh, what do you mean by that and how is having the hcm tool a competitive advantage now for you and the team and a lot of it comes down to that data and analytics so um you know from a hr perspective i want everyone to have their holiday it's great for well-being it's great for for our compliance but when people book their holiday um you know it really doesn't uh, you know other than in my own team it doesn't impact me particularly so you know um when much of the business has got operational areas that they support and look after you know the logistics element of of, of you know scheduling really comes in to it um, and being able to um, you know use HCM as a tool to make sure they've got available 
availability within their teams, see who's off sick, see who's on holiday, see who's got committed training, um, getting good visibility of that, um, and and to to take that data out and, and combine it with other business data um, for them is is really important so that they can see how they are uh, performing um, as as teams and delivering towards their targets, and that's what HCM enables them to do. Is is all of that um, data is is really powerful. It sounds like small changes, but obviously the impact is huge. Um, what are some of the other workflows and processes now that you've improved now that you've had to have this in place? Sure. So um, we've we've massively been able to impact on our time to time to hire um, in terms of being able to make sure that we're we're focusing on what the requirements are of of jobs before before we put them to market, and um, that's something we're continuing to enhance as Oracle improves the Oracle Recruitment Cloud because um, that is one of the the newer modules um, available from Oracle. So there's a lot of functionality we're seeing um, in all the releases, some really big updates there. Um, and soon managers will be able to book and manage their own interviews uh, through through the tool, which just brings efficiencies to the process because before we'd sort of be in a position where we had a separate applicant tracking system, all the interviews would be manually arranged by the managers or the recruiters and everything was being done through Outlook. Um, so bit by bit, all those incremental enhancements in the, in the functionality just make that process a little bit slicker, you know, from a diversity and inclusion perspective, we're, you know, really keen that um, um, you know, we can achieve our goals through that by looking at what's coming in our recruitment um, pipeline, how many candidates uh, of different characteristics are making it through to different stages within the interview to just make sure that, um, uh, you know, it, it's just the visibility, I think, of, of so many um, different areas of the system just help us, uh, you know, work towards yeah. those those goals. And, and certainly our, we've been through our um, annual pay review and, uh, and bonus process recently, and um, before that was just such a, a such a, yeah. a massive headache. In that, um, you know, it's 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 very complex and, a, and very manual process. <laughs> you know, I've uh, I don't think I'd ever seen a, a spreadsheet um, oh, containing so much uh, data, um, uh, and actually to to move that to to the compensation tool that that, that ultimately, um, you know, within a couple of hours had produced the calculation for for the company and was able to be scrutinized by finance and by audit and and sort of to to meet all the 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 tests there was was you know really valuable for us one of the biggest benefits i hear from companies that are going through the same transformation you have is that they now can themselves in the team can focus on more strategic tasks definitely yeah um that's i suppose immediately more um visible i guess within our our senior hr team so our our um, strategic hr business partners um have got more um capacity now because they've got you know the data that that supports them with their their business areas um and they're able to use that so we recently held some um talent reviews um with some of our, our senior management areas and and before all of that work would have would have you know, probably involved large sheets of paper and, um, you know, in a, in a, in a boardroom style fashion and, and, and everyone drawing something out that then at the end of the day needed putting onto a slide deck or capturing in another format. And actually now they've done all of that in HCM using the functionality. They've been able to have a really effective conversation and, and, and do some succession planning and some, um, you know, really focused development conversations. Um, and, and all of that information's there. It doesn't disappear. It doesn't need updating. They did it in the room and, 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 you know, and then they can continue uh, uh, that process. And that's been, you know, hugely valuable for us as, as every organization is, you know, really wants to focus on their their talent, those admin processes and the, the, the visuals of, uh, you know, being um, made that much more efficient and, and really nice to work with um, has been hugely positive. How are you managing some of the business expectations whilst they're getting used to the new systems? You know, one of our values is, is uh, straightforward. Um, so, you know, we, we um, are very clear with, with the business that, you know, this is, this is new for us and we are figuring it out ourselves, you know. Um, so I think sharing some of the, um, you know, some of the benefits, but also being clear about, you know, actually moving into quarterly releases has been difficult for us. It, it, it is a, a, you know, it's a real change in the way that we are working. And actually, when we went live, we had lots of help desk tickets and we just were not as quick as responding on, you know, on day 
day one and day 10 as we would have been, you know, a couple of months ago, because, you know, the team were finding their way through the functionality. So many of the processes are changed. But, um, you know, if you're just honest with people and you really communicate effectively and our, our, our communications team are, 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 you know, a great support um, in making sure that we that we get all our, our messages out. Um, so, you know, talking to business leaders, talking to employees and saying, look, can you just bear with us a little bit? We, you know, we're just for, you know, I'm sorry, it's taken a little bit longer to find the answer, but, you know, we're just getting to grips with this. It, employees are all reasonable. We all work for, for, for the same organization. We're all trying to achieve the right outcome. Uh, ab- absolutely. So I think a little bit of honesty goes a long way, you know, so don't, um, don't paint everything out to be perfect and, and wonderful. Um, you know, things are getting better and HCM is enabling an awful lot, but, um, you know, there's, there's there's uh, definitely some processes that we could benefit from improving and actually incorporating feedback into the mechanism. So, you know, if there's bit, you know, some of our managers had sort of said, well, actually, the, the way that we chose to deploy some of the hiring processes, they said, well, this is a little bit, bit, bit clunky. We actually had a, a form that we were capturing some requirements on that, that they sort of said, well, hang on, you've got this really slick system, but you've got a manual form sitting alongside it. Um, and, and part of that was the limitation is that Oracle Recruitment Cloud at the point we went live didn't necessarily had everything that we needed but actually three months later we've now had a quarterly release that means that we do so we sort of said look you know it was a compromise situation but we'll take that feedback and thank you for that and now we're going to make it make it better is there anything you would have done differently going back because i think you know we're not all we're not perfect right and there's always things we can do better so looking back anything you would have done differently from a data perspective from any migration that you need to uh, review transform and load and there's a whole process to it that's um, um you know that's uh, very impressive um actually what will happen is as we found is when you take data that you you think you almost trust um because you think you know so I, so if i take our benefits data from all our our, our employee benefits is, is kind of we we'd gone you know that, that wasn't one of the areas that i thought this is going to cause us a problem and it I think it's more there's a few things that kind of when we loaded into HEM, it kind of said, oh, this employee is receiving this benefit, but they're actually not eligible for it because actually, a, a you know, one of the um, system level controls, um, you know, in, in PeopleSoft hadn't worked. And I think it's at that point is what do you do about those flaws? Because, you know, somebody's in receipt of a uh, of a benefit um, and if you put it into HCM, it's going to take it away. So, you wow. know, it, it, here's me wanting to say, oh, you know, great you know here's hcm great new platform but by the way i might need to take away a benefit from you and we, and we didn't do that but 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 it presents yeah. um a few dilemmas in terms of um okay we found a problem so, so what do we do now and um you know and probably combining that at a point in the project when you're slightly fatigued from having made all the design decisions you're then getting these little problems that that, that pop up that you need to think okay uh, what's our strategy going to be to you know for making sure that uh, you know we we fix all these little things along the way and keep everyone happy good for everyone to know listening right now because that's just you know it's bound to happen there's always going to be something it's not perfect i would say it's not easy but it is good fun with the right team even through the the adversity so you know we we spent a lot of time making sure that we picked the right partner in terms of system implementer um, and integrating them into our teams you know not, not having them as a third party that just came in as a consultancy to do something to us but making them part you know understand our dna as a company um so uh, you know we used cognizant to support us with that and they were fantastic they came and sat in the middle of the hr team you know we went out we had pizza we did fun things to you know make them part of um you know part of our 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 culture and our organization so they understood us but also you know had them as good critical friends so you know we'd set out to get all this best practice but inevitably you you tend to want to go and build some of the things that you're familiar with and actually them holding them you back and saying hang on you know that isn't best practice are you sure you want to do that uh was really important and um you know keeping the energy high in the team and we we, you know we were really well supported by the wider h our team because um you know whilst we were uh, off having fun building building hcm they were still struggling along in the background with people softening and and you know covering some of our work for us so um you know the the camaraderie there was 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 really key 
did you have to bring in any new sets of skills or what did you retrain how would that look like a uh, majority of the team that came to work on the project they each took a functional module so one of them took workforce and and, and data and analytics one took payroll one took uh, compensation and reward and and they're all individuals that ultimately have aligned um, in the structure to to uh, one of the areas that they were supporting so we kind of made sure that we took um, subject matter experts in their existing kind of areas mm -hmm. they they then went and led on areas within uh, the product and then um, as we've changed our structure to support our um, you know um, involving HCM and our, our delivery going forwards they've then gone back to those areas so that everyone sort of had an expert um, that, that was either you know a, a manager or a key member of their team that was supporting them um, so uh, uh, because we'd sort of taken everyone from the team that had sort of almost uh, moaned the most around what they didn't <laughs> like around um, either the system or our processes and we said you know here's your opportunity to to make these better because we're going to have to live with them um, you know for some time and, and and you now get the opportunity to own some of that that change and drive it so um, you know and, and that's meant you know that's helped embed the the, the change uh, within the team as well what's next for you and the team we want to take a little bit of a breathing space i think because it's you know not only do you get um you know a long project delivery but then straight into go live um and with having only gone live with the payroll in in october um and we've just had our, our 19d uh release that the team are currently um testing and should be putting into production you know we've had so much go on over the last 12 months we just want to take a little little bit of time um to make sure everything's bedding in well you know go back and look take some feedback on are there areas that we need to optimize that we need to have a look at there was so much new functionality for us that we didn't have before so you know learning communities within the learning module um, that's that's nothing we had had before so you know just seeing how's that working for us is there functionality within the the product we've already bought that we've just not rolled out because we didn't give everything to to everyone on day one because there was just so much there you know we've got to look at our own rollout plan and and, and make sure that uh, we're keeping that aligned you know we've got a demo coming up of uh, work life solutions um which is uh, uh you know got some great opportunities there definitely as we look into that employee engagement and well-being space in terms of what hcm can offer and complement with what we already do as a as, as a business there may be some future rollouts well, it sounds like you deserve a break you and the team after all the work you've done of course congratulations i know it's not easy as well Thank and i appreciate you. you coming on here to share your journey with everyone listening um uh, as well um before we wrap up if there's sort of one sort of piece of advice parting piece of advice you give to people um, on this journey what would it be and if they have any questions or want to reach out to you personally uh, and uh, and say hello or you know ask for some advice sure yeah so um more than happy for people to contact me on um on linkedin um you know and happy to share the benefit of that experience and and you know thank you to all the people that did exactly the same for us um i think uh, it doesn't hurt to talk to as many people as uh, as possible um you know the our experience um you, you know the, there's definitely some commonality from some of the feedback that, that we've had from from others so i think yeah sharing stories really important and um you know thank you for for letting me be part of today and in terms of that that final feedback um i think again it's um communicate engage um as i think as you said you know the the, the hard part actually it begins on day one when you go live because yeah. that's when you know whatever you've designed and how wonderful it is that's when it really gets put to the test i think don't beat yourself up you know we went to our oracle open world in san francisco this year and shared part of our journey and and and, and listening to some of the other customers we were like wow you know sometimes as a team we really beat ourselves up for for you know not not making everything 100 percent perfect but just give yourself some breathing room give yourself a pat on the back for for what you what you have achieved and um you know be be proud of it well look, thanks so much tom i appreciate it, um uh, as well and i'm sure everyone else does listening i'm sure you're gonna get a lot of questions <laughs> from everyone on linkedin as well so, oh, so we're not the only ones and, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's it's incredible that the impact it's, gonna, it's having on a business already even in such, a, in such an early stage and you, you know just at the tip of the iceberg right um, yeah. as well so um, look I'll let you get back to your day thanks to everyone for listening on LinkedIn we appreciate you taking the time out to join us as always if you head over to hrdleaders.com forward slash podcast you'll find this episode up there tomorrow we'll have the show notes everything we've been talking about Tom thank you so much again and I wish you all the best until we next speak thanks Chris